Hey nesters, welcome back to another episode of Nesting Haven. We are back at Goodwill continuing our thrifting trip here. And so let's go ahead and get back into it. I really love the looks of this Lester Ware cup. It was so cute. And I always enjoy looking at the teapots. That one looks to be around the 1980s. I like the taller ones like that. They're really neat. I spy these beautiful Homer Laughlin bread plates just sitting there. I love the little colonial Georgian couple there courting. And you can see the applied silver there, the detailing on the edge. Some of that was wearing off. So I decided to pass on it. I absolutely adore this pattern. I always pick it up anytime I see it. It's called Heartland Village. It's from the early 90s. And I think it's the homesteader in me that I, just makes me love this pattern. So I can't pass it up. So I had already checked out this aisle. You guys probably saw that in my part one to this thrifting trip. Go check it out if you missed it. But one of the workers had gone down there and added some stuff to the shelf and had to walk back to see what it was. And I'm glad I did. I found these cute little figurines. We had a little bear shaker there and this cute little cat. No chips on the ears. <laughs> this guy, unfortunately, was a little bit faded in his paint, his nose. So, I wasn't sure on him. He was cute, but he wasn't in the best shape. Then we have this little, like, schnauzer, Scotty Doug. Might be a bone china piece, but I did go ahead and add three of those to my cart. It's been a hot minute since I found a really nice vintage green glassware piece. I absolutely adored this pedestal compote bowl. It had that leaf stem, so gorgeous, and great shape and a great price. I got excited when I looked down because I saw these beautiful plates. I thought it was going to be a matching set of four here, but unfortunately they only had one of the one I was interested in. It was a beautiful royal china. The pattern was called Falling Leaves. As you can see, there was a pretty big crack there. So I ended up leaving it behind. I absolutely adored it though. And now I know about this pattern, I'll definitely keep an eye out for it. I'd enjoy having a platter probably of it. I don't really need any more plates, but it is so gorgeous. I found a creamer I liked, definitely my style. Kind of that earthenware look to it. Beautiful golden yellow rim. They were only asking $3 for it. I thought that was pretty reasonable. It was in good shape. And then beside it, we have a beautiful falls graph. This is in the Aurora, or Aurora <laughs> pink. And I, you guys know how I feel about falls graph, the USA falls graph anyways. I absolutely adore it. And I'm so bummed it doesn't sell for very much. I didn't really personally need it. There was a couple of little little flaws in it as well so I didn't get it I, I made a wise choice and left it behind because I knew it wouldn't be too profitable I did find this beautiful Corel platter it's in the pattern Callaway it's this beautiful ivy you see how the edges are kind of rippled they made that pattern with two different looks one was just kind of a plain smooth look and the rippled edge look I believe they call a French white and that was produced from 94 to the early 2000s I found another really fun creamer. This one is a vintage Japan creamer with beautiful strawberries on the front. The graphics were still in amazing shape. Definitely a happy score. I was so excited when I turned the corner, I saw these gorgeous clowns. How fun are they? They were only $4 a piece and they were in amazing shape. The paint was all intact. I didn't see any wear to them at all. I absolutely love these guys. So fun. And my smile did not end there. There was even more clowns throughout the shelf. So I went ahead and checked them out. This one was really cool. Nice little hobo clown. His paint, he was cold painted, so he had a little bit 
of wear to them, but not, nothing too major. This one, I believe her umbrella was snapped off, so I didn't pay much mind to her. I've seen similar ones of these before. They're a nice porcelain, and they have the primary colors to him, so I've picked up some of those before as well. I love them. <laughs> This one was fun too. It was a hand painted ceramic hobbyist piece upside down. I'd never seen that before. I always see tons of hobbyist pieces like that, but that's the first time I came across that one. Then we have some of those Russ and Berry type statues. Sometimes those can be fun, sometimes they can be a little bit naughty, I guess. <laughs> and some of them are a little vulgar. And then we had some Raggedy Ann and Andy stuff. I'm guessing all the clowns and these probably came from the same household donation. This is a, no, it's a Byron mold. I almost said Atlantic mold. And it is from 1974. And then they had the two little ones in the front. I thought those were pretty cute. They had a nice, what do you call it? Like a almost metallic paint to them. Kind of interesting. And I like the size of them. If you're into Raggedy Ann and Andy, I think it's a perfect little piece of decor you can add. So anytime you see a clown on a little pedestal, definitely always check them out because some of them are worth money. These little poochie clowns you see that has the little gold emblem in the front that says poochie. Those go for pretty good money. I was kind of checking them over, making sure there was no chips or anything like that. I definitely thought hey, should I uh, maybe purchase him and see if I can make a little money with him? Do you want to purchase me? Do you? <laughs> I continue to find more clowns as I move down the aisle. This one was really neat. I don't often see female clowns, so I thought that was cool to see. $3. I think all the clowns were marked $3, which wasn't too bad. This one was neat. I thought he looked pretty dapper. <laughs> His little red nose was kind of worn off, but I think it adds to his charm. It reminds me of when you're a kid and you dress up for Halloween and you might do like makeup on your face as part of your costume and then by the end of the night it's all like smushed off and half of it's missing. <laughs> So many clowns today. I just kept seeing them everywhere. <laughs> Those were kind of fun. I didn't like the way that they were like more of a bisque. I like them glazed typically. But look what I found. A matching napkin holder that goes with my little creamer I found earlier. So that was pretty cool. They were in completely different areas so I'm glad I was able to pair them back together. I'm sure there were some people freaked out by the clowns but this is what freaks me out. This is probably the creepiest thing I've ever seen, just the bottom of a baby as a planter. I mean, no. <laughs> just no. Hadn't a clue what this was. It kind of appeared to be like some type of a magnifying glass. Really wasn't sure. I just kind of randomly sitting there. I always tend to check out the tool section because tools can make some pretty good money and plus my husband likes them, so it was just something to look at, I guess. These are kind of cool, made in 1983, but the frost on it was really faded. They weren't looking too cute.
So underneath those plates, I was after this little base plate. I thought it was so gorgeous, perfect for decor. It had a nice, like, opaque look around the edge of it. Now, it did have some gold trim that was fading off, but I still thought it was a really great piece to pick up. Definitely has a lot of potential. I was looking at these birdhouse plates. They were put up by Gibson, a more modern piece. They just look kind of cottage core to me, so I was contemplating whether I should pick them up or not. Now this here was stunning. I love the colors to this. It was a little bit larger than I typically see these stoneware plates. The pattern was called April Song. How pretty is that? I'm starting to venture out and check out the electronics a little bit more. You never know what you can find. I did see this Polaroid camera. It is the 1600 and I figured it was worth taking a risk on. I had a couple scratches on the side of it, but I've actually been looking for one. I was going to purchase one of the newer models. They have actually come out with new ones and they still make film for it and everything like that. So I was interested in getting one, so I did pick that up to try to get a locate some film and give it a go. And you guys thought you were done with the clowns, but not quite yet. <laughs> I found this vintage Radio Shack like math game and I wasn't sure. I was like, oh, it probably doesn't work, but actually the battery was still going good and everything. So I went ahead and turned it on. I was trying to see how exactly it worked. I was like, okay, what do they want me to do here? And I'm like, I guess there's four balls. So let's try that. And the clown was happy. I got the answer right. <laughs> so it was kind of cute. <laughs> now I can't remember who it was. It was a couple years back. One of my YouTube reselling friends had said yellow plastic wear sold very well. I don't usually pick up ashtrays, but I wanted to check it out just because it was yellow plastic <laughs> and it looked vintage. I did see this Aladdin thermos. It's just a small like soup thermos. Only a dollar. It wasn't in the best condition. It was quite a few scratches on it, so I decided to go ahead and pass on that. I haven't really been impressed with the holiday selection for quite some time. I don't hardly ever see anything anymore. I used to all the time, and I glance, and I'm not really finding anything. I would have picked this up, but I believe there was a crack in it, so I set that back down. And this is kind of a cute little sign here. <laughs> well, that's going to do it for today's Thrift Along with me. Be sure to subscribe and catch the thrift haul in tomorrow's video where I'll go a little bit deeper into the items I picked up and tell you what I picked up to resell and what I'm keeping. So we'll see you then, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.